Welcome back, everybody. This week in America on the Blue Funk Broadcasting Radio Network. Great to have you with us on the program. As mentioned, our guest on the show today is Sally Patchelock. She's an RN, BSN, co-author of the book with Jeffrey Stewart of the bestseller, award-winning, Could It Be B12, An Epidemic of Misdiagnoses, the underground classic that has saved lives. This is the second edition we're talking about on the program. Sally, welcome to the show. Great to have you with us on the program. Hi, Rick. Thank you for having me. There are so many things to talk about of interest to so many people because this really is what you call a silent ep- epidemic. Let's talk in basic terms to, to start things off here. Vitamin B12 and deficiency. Explain that a little bit and why B12 is so important to us. Well, B12 is one of the 13 vitamins that we need for health. But B12 is different. That's very difficult to absorb. And it's a very frequently... Um, misdiagnosed disorder. People think B12 deficiency is alternative medicine or holistic health, but it's actually a true medical disorder. We need it for the brain, for our nerves, for our vascular system, so we don't make blood clots. And we also need it to prevent anemia and also for the bone structure. So the major areas that B12 attacks is really the brain and the nerves, but then it causes an array of other kind of medical problems. People um, rarely get diagnosed properly, and that's a big problem. They report in the literature that 16% of the entire U.S. population, that's 48 million Americans, have a B12 deficiency. And the problem is physicians and other clinicians are not testing symptomatic patients and are also not testing at-risk patients, which creates a huge problem in America. This is really an important program, and I want to mention once again, Sally is an RN, a BSN, practicing emergency nursing for 24 years, cared for thousands of patients. Her co-author in the book is Jeffrey Stewart. He's a board-certified in emergency medicine, been practicing for 18 years. So these are real medical people who see everyday real medical problems caused by vitamin B12 deficiency. And briefly, uh, Sally, let's talk about you actually came across this when you were misdiagnosed, and it actually cost you a couple of years uh, of your life before they finally figured out what the problem was. Well, my story is not that interesting because I was never injured from it. I was lucky that in probably like 20 years old, 21 years old, I was diagnosed. And I was lucky that I had macrocytic cells, which are enlarged red blood cells. And the reason I got tested and pursued it is because when I would get my complete blood count back, I had these enlarged red cells, and I would ask the doctors, well, what does this mean? And they say, oh, don't worry about it. Um, it means nothing because you're not anemic. But when I w- was going through nursing school, I read in a laboratory manual what macrocytosis means, and that's what pursued me to get tested. The reason, so I do have one form of B12 deficiency. There are several different reasons a person can be B12 deficient. The particular reason I have a B12 deficiency is I have autoimmune pernicious anemia. Pernicious means deadly anemia. We interchangeably use that term, pernicious anemia, for B12 deficiency. And what people don't realize is that you do not have to be anemic to have a severe B12 deficiency. So the reason I really wrote the book was not, yes, I have it, but the main reason is working in the emergency department for 24 years now, I see patients daily coming in that have signs and symptoms of B12 deficiency and 20 years ago and even 10 years ago, even now, you know, a lot of physicians, they laugh at, they go, oh, B12, they think it's a vitamin. They kind of roll their eyes like, who cares? Have them go take a vitamin. There is such a major knowledge deficit of what a B12 deficiency can do to the body. You need B12 for the myelin. The myelin is a fatty protective covering that surrounds our brain and all of our nerves. So if you're deficient, you get demyelination. So people start getting signs and symptoms such as numbness or tingling or paresthesias. They have difficulty walking, a wide-based gait. Um, They can have any kind of psychiatric problems where they can have depression up to hallucinations or kind of like bipolar people, even suicidal ideations. So it really attacks the brain and it attacks the nerves. In older people and even maybe even middle age, 50s, 60s, a B12 deficiency makes people forgetfulness. Um, confusion, where we think that they have dementia. We've seen many patients placed on dementia drugs when they've come in the emergency department. I've gotten finally a group of physicians to test patients. And we see that 
they have a B12 deficiency, but obviously someone else has diagnosed them with dementia because they're on Aricep, Nemenda, these dementia drugs. Well, it's we scary. Yeah, yeah, it's scary when you read, and the book is called, Could It Be B12, An Epidemic of Misdiagnoses? This is the second edition. It's available Amazon all across the country at the website, uh, Shirley's web, uh, Sally's website, which is b12awareness.org. You can only go to our website and get that information. But people actually are told, family members told, that someone has dementia, has Alzheimer's, and it actually is a B12 deficiency. Yeah, we're, we're wasting billions of yes. dollars in America by not including a B12 proper workup in the differential diagnosis. We're not saying everybody has a B12 deficiency, but all healthcare providers need to know the signs, the symptoms, the patients at risk, the drugs that can deplete deep B12. And if a patient is symptomatic, you must test the patient. You can't lay your hands on them and say, oh, you don't have a B12 deficiency. And you cannot go by a complete blood count. What the one of the main reasons, and this is there's several reasons why physicians aren't actively looking for B12, but why they're mistakenly and misdiagnosing it is because they're relying on a patient to be severely anemic, like pernicious anemia and macrocytic. So if they don't see macrocytosis, these enlarged red blood cells with severe anemia, they don't think B12. And that is one reason why we're getting a lot of misdiagnosed patients. And that's a problem and we need to re-educate them and tell them you do not have to be anemic or macrocytic to have a severe B12 deficiency. What we know now, and we've known in 1988, a great journal article came from New England Journal of Medicine that proved you do not have to be anemic or macrocytic. But if you go back in history, this was also shown way back in the early 1900s that the neurologic and psychiatric manifestations of B12 deficiency well precede the hematologic or the blood changes. So there's just such a lack of education that we, and if once we re-educate the medical community, we shouldn't really have a problem. We've taken care of vitamin D, but we're really lacking on knowing about vitamin B12. You mentioned just in, in talking briefly about your situation, several things that uh, that you were lucky. It didn't do injury to you. And I want to talk about the luck aspect of that. That came from your knowledge, from your background. Uh, Sally, along with Jeffrey Stewart, taking that knowledge and put it in the book, Could It Be B12? And the website, which is an excellent website, which is b12awareness.org. So you're taking what you learned, putting out to help other people, and you mentioned it didn't injure me. Talk about that because what what happens if this does go totally undiagnosed? Great question. I've been studying this now for over a little bit over 25 years. And I there's thousands of medical, well-published medical journal articles. And B12 deficiency is written in every textbook. So what happens is, again, the myelin. You have to have B12 for the myelin. So what happens is you can... B12 goes undiagnosed, untreated for a long period of time, you can actually injure the nerve. So it may begin with neuropathy, this numbness and tingling to the hands and feet, but then it progresses where they have difficulty ambulating and patients frequently fall. So not only are we getting nerve injury, which can cause, you, patients have been, there's malpractice cases where patients are wheelchair bound because their legs are destroyed because of the demyelination. So not only nerve injury, but then we have to also look at older adults and even middle-aged adults, B12 deficiency frequently causes falls, fall-related trauma, causing hip fractures, other bone fractures. So injury, when you look at multiple sclerosis, that is a demyelinating disease, so is B12 deficiency. You cannot, um, by looking at a patient, they, their signs and symptoms are identical because they're both demyelinating diseases. So a patient can be wheelchair bound. There are patients that have been misdiagnosed that have to use um, forearm crutches to ambulate because their balance is completely destroyed. Um, they cannot run like you or I. So this is something where the B12 deficiency can also progress to the point where you can actually kill the patient. And there are, there are cases where patients have died from B12 deficiency. This is ridiculous because here we are in you know 2013, this is a disorder that won the Nobel Prize in Medicine back in 1934 because people died from B12 deficiency. In fact, Alexander Graham Bell won the Nobel, um, died of pernicious anemia in 1922. So this is not only can it injure your nerves and disable you, causing disability, but it can actually kill you. 
And you have to really sit and think and wonder. I can walk into any nursing home and assisted living center and find you a B12 deficient patient. The question is, right now in America, how many patients are being warehoused in nursing homes from fall related trauma, hip fractures, dementia, when they actually truly have a B12 deficiency going on? This is inhumane and it's, it's insane that our current system is allowing this and we are so blind. In, in my eyes, this is the dirtiest little healthcare secret and we need to expose this. And I'm, I'm so grateful that you're doing a show like this because people need to know about B12 deficiency. Well, it's an excellent book. It's an eye-opening book. Sally Hatchelak is our guest on the program. As I mentioned once again, she's an RN, BSN, practicing emergency nursing for 24 years, cared for thousands of patients. The co-author is Jeffrey Stewart, Dr. Jeffrey Stewart, board certified in emergency medicine, been practicing for 18 years. These are medical people talking about a medical problem they see, want to bring attention to people. The book is called Could It Be B12? Second edition, an epidemic of misdiagnoses. And when you look at Amazon and the reviews, the book saved my life, testimonials from doctors and nurses. Uh, someone said you talked about it earlier. Was a miracle cure for my sister's depression? That that's something that is oftentimes it can be misdiagnosed. Uh, it, it, tell me a little bit. One of the great chapters in the book, actually, tell, if you want to put this in dollars and cents, it talks about the cost of of having a misdiagnosis, and it it's staggering. I mean, we're talking billions of dollars added to our healthcare cost because we're making a misdiagnosis or not making a diagnosis correctly in the first place. Well, absolutely. Um, Fall-related trauma, a simple hip fracture is over for a four-day stay is over $35,000. And I can't tell you how many older adults have come in. They are so symptomatic. They're on some drugs that can cause a B12 deficiency. No one has checked them because we're checking them. And you don't get B12 deficiency in a month or a week or even a couple months. You've had it for a long period of time when it's, it's showing in their blood tests. And they've broken their hips. And... You know, we fix their hip, but no one's addressing the B12 deficiency. Obviously, if we're finding it in the emergency department, that means that that patient's primary care doctor and other specialists has failed to even contemplate that B12 deficiency could be affecting this patient. And it's really kind of sad because in the literature, we know that B12 deficiency is very common in older adults, people over the age of 60. So you would think that older adults would all be on B12 or they would be actively testing them. And we don't. We, and I had, you know, in the beginning years of me of this journey, I really started in the 90s, um, early 90s, trying to get physicians educated about B12. And it was really going against a brick wall. In the last 10 years, I've, I've made some ground and, and I've, I'm teaching them. How I got them interested is when I started giving them cases of true malpractice cases, at first they were saying, what do you mean a malpractice from B12? Oh, come on. Which showed me that I started, they started listening more. It made me realize they don't understand the pathophysiology of what B12 can do. Once they learned that, whoa, I can get sued from this, this can cause injury, then they came on board and started testing patients. So whatever it takes. You, you, you took know? it down to a level that they were quickly able to, uh, to right. relate to it, and you, you got right. their attention. What do we do to eliminate a B12 deficiency? Do we change our eating habits? Do we take vitamins? I've heard that people have said Merv Griffin used to take daily B12 injections. How do we how do we correct the problem and make sure our B12 deficiency is is eliminated? Well, great question. B12, unlike the other vitamins, is a very difficult vitamin to absorb. It takes several different steps in the GI tract to absorb. You have to have a healthy functioning stomach small intestine, liver, and pancreas. Otherwise, you can fall short for B12 deficiency. So anybody who has gastrointestinal disease, celiac disease, Crohn's disease, patients who have surgeries, gastric bypass for weight loss, um, gastric reflux disease for ulcers or for um, GERD symptoms, those proton pump inhibitors, they can cause a B12 deficiency if you take them over time. So people need to kind of realize why they can become B12 deficient. B12 is very cheap to treat. In fact, I have I use hydroxycobalamin. It is a injectable B12. This vial is 30 cc's, will last me an entire year, and it costs less than $40. So I get treated. I take an injection every 10 days to every two weeks. It lasts me almost an entire year. 
and I self-inject, just like diabetics inject, and you can give right. it subcutaneously. So this is very cheap, and we recommend patients who have pernicious anemia and certain forms of B12 deficiency, they really should be placed on injection. People over the age of 60, they should be taking, and even over 50, they should be taking B12 for um, health and prevention to prevent a B12 deficiency, to prevent de dementia. And they have little, small, um, they call them microlingual, that goes under their tongue. This one I like is by Superior Source um, B12. It has methyl cobalamin and adenosyl cobalamin, which are the active forms. Our bodies, when we take B12 in from food, we actually have to, our bodies have to convert it to the active forms. These are the active forms. Hydroxyl cobalamin, your body can easily convert it to adenosyl and methyl B12. Methyl B12 injections are expensive. They're made by compounding pharmacies. And we're finding that a lot of these physicians, sometimes naturopathic physicians, et cetera, they kind of, they're jacking up the price when really hydroxyl cobalamin does the job. These are very tiny. I don't know if you can see this. They're so tiny. They go underneath your tongue and they're the size almost of like a nitroglycerin that melt under your tongue. These are 2000 micrograms. You need over um, 1000 micrograms and daily. And I use these in between my injections successfully and they're and they're great so we advocate if a patient has signs and symptoms of b12 deficiency which is on our website and we can go over to again we advocate or if you have a diagnosis of dementia or neuropathy or some kind of a neurologic disorder depression or any kind of psychiatric disorder we advocate you get tested first because we you want to know do i have a b12 deficiency maybe you can get off some of your other drugs um, and the tests are methylmalonic acid homocysteine and the serum B12. There's another test called holotranscobalamin 2. Your physicians know all these tests, they're long names, especially if you're diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, you need all four tests done. And people who are healthy, you should be taking this for health and prevention. And you need to take over 1000 micrograms. The book is called, Could It Be B12? An Epidemic of Misdiagnoses. The Underground Classic Saved Lives. The second edition is now out. Uh, Sally Patchelock has been our guest on the program, co-author of the book, along with Jeffrey Stewart. In just a couple minutes left here in the program, as a consumer, as someone who is either over 60 in that category that you would label maybe as, as a risk category, or with a parent that, that falls into that category, when we go to our family doctor, how do we bring this up? Do we take in a copy? I know people have taken a copy of the book. Sometimes it's sensitive. The doctors don't want to hear you trying to diagnose yourselves, especially when you're sub subjected to all these commercials for drugs on television, and we all want to go to our doctor and get those. How do we be forceful with the doctor in making sure that we're tested uh, for a B12 deficiency? Well, you need to you need to insist upon it to say, um, you want to be tested for B12 deficiency, just like we test patients for diabetes or thyroid disorders. They need to you, they need to go with their parents or grandparents and be advocates for them to say, look, how do you know I don't have a B12 deficiency? You need to be you need to be screened. If they refuse to screen you, you need to find yourself a new doctor. I mean, it's not like every doctor is, is uneducated about this, but maybe you know 40 percent are probably testing patients. Um, we have this is a B12 awareness. It's a trifold. All this information, the signs and symptoms, you can write them down and take them to your doctor. It kind of explains the signs, the symptoms, et cetera. Um, this is our book, Could It Be B12? You could take the book with you to say, hey, I want to be tested for B12 deficiency. You need to say, do you know it can cause nerve damage? Do you know it can cause um, brain atrophy, actually brain shrinkage? It's easily confused with dementia, with other neurologic disorders like multiple sclerosis, restless leg syndrome. So... You just need to insist upon it. And I guess, too, if people don't have, say they don't have insurance, they don't have a doctor, um, and you're not, there's no way you're going to get tested, then I really would say start. you need to start taking B12. Just like people take vitamin D supplements, you need to take B12, but you need to take, we don't really advocate, advocate shots and the ones under your tongue that absorb because a lot of a lot of you know, everybody has their favorite multivitamin and, and and by the way a multivitamin does not have enough b12 to correct a deficiency in a multivitamin there is only six micrograms of b12 to correct a deficiency or low b12 you need over a thousand micrograms wow so you're not and close so, right and sometimes in pills they have a lot of binders and fillers and your gut has if you don't have enough hydrochloric acid it's, it's difficult to split so that's why we like the ones under the tongue. We give some medications that way 
you know, vessels that can absorb the drug. It's, it's a better alternative than, um, you know, we might as well, you know, spend money. And um, 60, 60 tablets of this probably costs, you know, you under $15, $20. So in a year, these cost less than $100 to treat a B12 deficiency versus dementia drugs cost 2000 a year. And if you truly have a B12 deficiency and you're taking dementia drugs, that deficiency is going to continue and you can cause permanent brain um, damage and permanent dementia. So that's why it's critical that B12 deficiency be ruled out early on in the symptoms of patients. The book is called Could It Be B12? An Epidemic of Misdiagnoses. This is the second edition updated. Information available, and that's it. You can get that at Amazon. You can get that from uh, any of the sources around the country. The website is b12awareness.org, b12awareness.org. A lot of great information there. A lot of the the topics we talked about you will find there as well. Uh, Sally, I got just a, a minute or so left in the program. You and Jeffrey deal with medicine every day, deal with people that uh, that are coming in, especially in an emergency situation. We talk a lot about preventative medicine. Are we making, and this would fall in that category, are we making strides in that direction or is it just something we like to talk about and throw it out there? Well, I think we're really falling short on B12 deficiency and it's just very frustrating because there's such a wealth of information out there. This disorder, again, they won the Nobel Prize 1934. There's like over 80 years that we've known about this disorder, but what we're doing, we're using other costly pharmaceuticals to treat the signs and symptoms of B12 deficiency, which is not cost effective and it's dangerous because people need to realize, we need to re-educate, go get into medical schools and start continuing education lectures for physicians to make them realize a B12 deficiency can injure a patient. You can put them in a wheelchair. Um, in fact, I don't know if you've ever heard of the comic book killer, um, Dennis Murphy did a big thing on Dateline NBC. There is a man that actually is in jail. Um, he was accused of murdering his wife 20 years ago. They found some new evidence. They retried it. He came and they reconvicted him. So he's in jail now. But he came in. He's like his late 40s, could walk like you or I, fine, he was a runner, and they sentenced him. So now he's in jail. While he was in jail, he started having neurologic signs and symptoms. I think at first they thought he was faking. Um, then they didn't know what was wrong with him. He went to see the jail doctor. They finally sent him to a neurologist. They didn't know what was wrong with him. He had a B12 deficiency. But, and this just goes to show you, they did do a serum B12 and he was extremely low, but what they did, how they treated him, instead of giving him a multivitamin that had six micrograms, they gave him two multivitamins, which would be 12 micrograms. In his condition, he needed injections and high dose sublingual B12. And what has happened to him he is wheelchair bound. He has no use of his legs. And actually, he has a malpractice case against the county. So people may think, well, you know, he killed his wife, so he deserves to have this. This is just a pure great example of what a knowledge deficit there is in America that this jail doctor and the neurologist, this is what this is what is going on in America all over the place. And it's being covered up. We don't discuss malpractice cases. They're settled out of court. We don't educate the public. And this misdiagnosis just is continually happening, and we have to break the cycle. We have to educate people about B12 deficiency. And you do through the book, Could It Be B12, An Epidemic of Misdiagnoses, uh, second edition, also at the excellent website, b12awareness.org. I mentioned the book was an award-winning book as well, co-written by our guest on the program, Sally Patchelock, along with Jeffrey Stewart, both long-term medical people that see and deal with these problems on an ongoing basis. Sally, thank you so much for joining us on the program. You're doing great work. We will have you back uh, again. Much more to talk about. Thank you for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. Again, the book is Could It Be B12, An Epidemic of Misdiagnoses. It's available Amazon and all across the country. You're listening to This Week in America on uh, Blue Funk Broadcasting Radio Network.